the way that you should do this is you need to write out what exactly you want from them in specifics in yes. trade. Yeah. So that they'll honor what you're asking and then you guys kind of have this verbal agreement so that yeah. they know what you expect. I can't find anybody. And so I start researching, you know, everybody starts, I, I feel like us West Coasters start looking in LA, right? Yeah, that's because the first place we go. Yeah, that's that, the first that, place that we shift to. Exactly. You know, they're, um, they're kind of like, they're the trendsetters or they're the early adopters, if you will, for like yeah. West Coast aesthetic, right, and beauty. So it makes yes, sense. Totally. Um, and so, so the next day, you know, I'm, it, this was late at night when I was doing all this research and I found a couple of places and, and I, I, the next day, I don't know. I was just like, why don't I just call and kind of ask about it? Like find out some general information. Yeah. Uh, and this lady is like in a rush and she answers the phone. She's like, Oh, are you calling for the training? And I was like, no, um, I wanted some. And she's like, well, let me, let me put you on hold. And so I'm like waiting and I'm like, okay, this is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she gets back on the phone. She's like, so you're not calling about the training. And I'm like, well, what, what's the, tr like the training? Yeah. So, um, I was like, well, I'm from Seattle and I, I was just doing some research and I found out that you offer microblading and she was like, well, yeah, we're doing training right now. And there's a wait list if you want to get your brows done. So get off the phone and I'm kind of processing it and I'm like what's this training you know yeah. and it was this weird thing that like clicked with me because going all the way back when I first you know when I first decided that business was going to be my major I'd always told myself I was like oh by 30 I'm going to start a business you know yeah. a year uh, a birthday goes by and a birthday goes by and you're like what kind of business am I going to start right? right I think that's the trickiest part is kind of finding out what, what do you want to do? And so, you know, I'm, I'm over 30 by the time I end up having this conversation with this woman. Yeah. And I'm like, this is kind of a great idea. Like exactly. there isn't anybody that's in the Seattle market that's mm -hmm. offering this service for people that are truly suffering for feeling like kind of normal, exactly. you know, or like they've lost this physical appearance that, that makes them insecure. Yeah. And, uh, really long story short, I, 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 I sign up for the class. Uh, I make the decision to, to fly down to LA and, um, take all of the, I mean, I didn't just take microblading. I ended up taking, you know, like all the additional thing, eyeliner, lip liner, uh, uh, more para, paramedical procedures like, um, like scar camouflaging, um, yeah. areola reconstructive tattooing, um, and, uh, scalp micropigmentation. So, so, so you run the full gamut, you know how to do it all. Well, I do, but I choose not to do it all because <laughs> this is, this is the best thing that I describe because people are like, Oh, why don't you do it all? And I'm like, okay, yeah. so, so if you go to the cheesecake factory, yeah, you're not going to have one good, like you're going to have this giant menu. Right. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and the things are going to be kind of mediocre. Like you're yeah. not going to go there and you're going to get like the best pad tie. You got to go to like, a Thai to restaurant. the place that's yeah. supposed to do it. No, the, but I will say that's funny. You bring, I love the Cheesecake Factory, and I remember. The, <laughs> and I used to think everything on their menu was amazing. And then I don't know. I'm gonna say for bragging rights. So I want. I ran a marathon um, years ago, and we went to the Cheesecake Factory afterwards. And I got like this burrito, and it was the worst thing ever. And I don't know if it's because I just <laughs> ran a marathon, or is it because yeah. they have such a large menu of options that yeah. it's hard to specialize in one in thing. In one thing, yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, I took all of the, you know, when I first opened the business, I, I offered it all because I was yeah. like, oh, okay. I didn't know what I was doing. Like, exactly. I switched over from being in always a, a business setting, management setting, corporate forever, yeah. my whole life, to then taking all these courses and within, you know, a three to six month period, opening up a business about something I knew nothing about. Like, so, I, I, Oh, no, keep going. I, 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 no, I was like, no, so, I, I have so many similarities, right? Because I feel like I want to touch on a couple of things you said. First off, I feel like some people know what they want to do as far as business wise. Yeah. Sometimes the business finds you, right? Yeah. And for me, when I was doing wardrobe branding, I like you, I was like, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur like in middle school, junior high. I didn't know what. I knew I liked fashion. I never thought I couldn't draw, so I never thought it would be fashion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fashion found me, ironically, through like, branding myself and doing things um but also what you mentioned is you said you thought it would be a good idea because there was nobody doing it 
I always say like there's the advantage of being first in a space and yeah. then there's the disadvantage because you're educating the space. So talk totally. about that when you're like the first person doing something like there yeah. is, there's the potential, but there's also yeah. you're, you're, you're kind of climbing a little bit higher because no one knows about it. So you're like, Oh, what is, what is, you know, a uh, uh, microblading or whatever? Like totally. for me in Portland, what is fashion in Portland, Oregon? Like, what do you, what do you even mean that you're a stylist? Someone pays you? I'm going to pay yeah. you to dress me? Like, that doesn't happen here. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that, I think, you like, I mean, truly, like, that was the, that was the most difficult part in the meeting because it was like, how do I navigate this new venture, right? Yeah. And how do I, how do I make this work? And, and it was, it was like, okay, well, I have all these like business tactics, but like never for myself, right? And so you're like, okay, how, how am I going to do this? I got I to gotta kind of dabble and see how are other people doing this, which yeah. was really challenging because there was a lot of people that were doing it. So you look up to people in the industry that are all over. They're not necessarily in Seattle. There was a couple people, I would say there was about a handful of people that all started right about the same time. Okay. But the advantage that they had was that they were already in the beauty industry. Gotcha. So they had already, they had already been doing, you know, whatever lashes, yeah. uh, uh, skincare, something in the, in the beauty industry yeah. that I knew nothing about. So, um, so that kind of brings us to, to what our whole talk about is today yeah. is, is like, I was like, okay, how can I get people to like, know who I am? Exactly. Like, what do I do? And, and, the 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 kind of tricky part not to date myself but i didn't know how to really use social media in a in a business perspective right yeah. like i like i actually my my oldest daughter i kind of was like hey so uh how does this work like what right. are they're, they're the, they're, that's like they, they, that's like the cohort you use like if you have kids and be like okay so jen and they're such y'all know the age but it's like how do you use yeah. this they are they are the experts in that yeah and yeah. doing it because that's all they yeah. do right yeah so I, I, I legitimately took a, well, I went, this is when the Riveter first opened. Okay. And I took a, I took it. Do you know what the Riveter is? No, I'm, I'm trying to think of what it is. No, I'm not familiar. It's, it's a, it's like a shared workspace that okay. um, a bunch of different uh, people use to um, either work out of or create themselves. But there's also like, there's like yoga classes or like yeah, okay. networking things. Quite, so almost like, like a WeWork or something like along the line. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. It's, a, it's a fancy WeWork. And it's, gotcha. I mean, it's a, it's a brilliant company, but they had Is just it in opened. Bellevue? Because everything's There's fancier a, in Bellevue. <laughs> well, it, it started off, it, the first one was in the, the old real, uh, real world house in Seattle. Really? Okay. Yeah. 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 A lot of people don't know that that's, that's uh, the, what that space used to be, got you, but, got you. um, yeah, there is one in Bellevue. Yeah. Uh, so, so the Riveter says, Oh, there's this Instagram class. And I was like, sign me up. I'm like, I'm like, I better take this Instagram class. I need yeah, to yeah. learn. Yeah. And, and it ended up, um, it was really cool. It ended up being, uh, the lady who, who taught the class. Um, she was a school teacher and she did Instagram on the side, but got she you. was, she was very successful. Like yeah. she back then had, learned that, like all the algorithms and yeah. understood like how to grow her following. So she was yeah. teaching this class, ended up being a client of mine after that. And go. I met a bunch of other influencers and that's when people started to say, Hey, why don't you come to this event? Why don't you come to this event? Yeah. And at that point I'm like, well, you got to put yourself out there, you uh -huh. know, like, yeah, it's not, it's not going to, it's not going to hurt me. It's not going to hurt you. And I think also, too, I think the fact you came from business, I know for me, I talk about creatives all the time, especially, and the one reason I created this was because you have the business people or the corporate America that maybe not be as familiar with like social media and marketing and branding themselves individually. Yeah. And then you have the creators who are amazing at that. They know how to, you know, do graphic design and do videos, yet the business side of it, they're lacking. And so yeah. I felt like if you're someone that can actually play both sides and someone yeah. that actually has a business background, yeah. you are set up to be successful if you can embrace, in fact, the creative side. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where you're saying it's like, you know, my challenges, yes, while they were different, I also had a lot of uh, a, a huge upper hand in, in the business side of that because exactly. like anybody can do the, the work, right? Yeah. Not anybody. I mean, like it, it obviously takes a talent and a skill, but 
but the business side of it is something that you gain with experience. Like that's not something that like, I mean, that took me over a decade of it's a learned skill. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. And so, so that's where, you know, I was willing to do the footwork. I mean, I mm -hmm. walked around the neighborhoods. I popped in, you know, any, yeah. anybody that was willing to listen. And, and I think that's how we met. I, yeah. I went to these, events that i didn't really necessarily belong in yeah but it got my name out there well you know what's funny i mean i could take this so many different ways so full circle um the reason i even came to seattle was because going back to la i was like okay so i'm in portland before i started before i had any clients i'm like i'm gonna actually utilize portland's relationships like on tv really quick and i'm gonna get to seattle because between portland and seattle i will get to la and so yeah. I went to Seattle, went to these events, and then I got was, you know, was with the Fashion Week a little bit. So that's how I actually made it happen. But even, even the one thing I did that I think helped me be successful is I realized my clientele is not necessarily at fashion shows. I went to all of them at the beginning, but I was yeah. like, my clientele is at these events and these lifestyles and whether it was Polo Noir or Derby or whatever, whereas yeah. I'm going to then place myself in these environments. And by fashion, especially like your walking billboards, so that made it really easy for me to stand out. And then totally. that's how I was able to, you know, build my brand because now I'm aligned with these type of events as well yeah. as get clientele that actually fits my demographic. So, yeah. so I did less and less fashion-based events and more and more lifestyle-based events. And then essentially, like I just hung out and kicked it and dressed yeah. up, and then I got clients. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's interesting how that works because sometimes what we think is going to work the best yeah doesn't doesn't always work out i mean no and 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 that that was that's kind of like when i was meeting all these individuals i didn't know who everybody was yeah. i was just like who's gonna let me you know create this artwork on their eyebrows yeah and who who's like how how and what impact do they make on anyone that's willing to come to me because like i could i've done uh I mean, I've done a lot of influencers, a ton. Yeah. And no, I, uh, I know, I, I, yeah, I'm familiar with some of them that you, yeah. Yeah, and and some of them worked and some of them didn't. I mean, I, I again, having that business background, I, I, I still to this day, even though I'm fully booked, I don't, I don't work, I don't need to really use these influencers anymore. I still maintain my relationships with Absolutely. them because I think that it's great. And I've gotten to know a lot of them really well and they've become, you know, kind of friends, right? right. But. Yeah. But um, I used to have this Excel spreadsheet and it was like, right. like literally every time somebody walks in, the first thing I say to them, well, besides greeting them is, how'd you find me? You know, yeah, like okay. I, I have to know these things and yes. I don't, I don't ask it loosely. Like I yeah. ask it because I'm like paying attention in Who's my working? Who, yeah. yeah. What's Who's making working? sense. So, yeah. so, so let's talk about that. I want to talk about, so how did you decide that? And you were early in the game, especially in the Northwest, micro-influencers, right? Because a lot of people think, yeah. okay, I need to look at, you know, someone that has a whole bunch of, like, a large number. And, like, micro-influencers, yeah. a lot of times, when you're looking at value or ROI for using someone that's connected to the community, depending on what you're offering, yeah. is a better yeah. way. A, how did you realize that micro-influencers were the way to go? And then talk about the actual track tracking of it. Because most people, they just post. And I'll say they post to post, and they have, like, it's not intentional. Yeah. They don't know yeah. where they're getting business from. So talk yeah. about both of those aspects. Yeah, so so it was it's it was kind of a whirlwind because I was like, how do how do I even go about doing this? Yeah. And and the re the reason that it's it was like this light bulb that went off for me was because I again started looking at the respected people in the in the industry mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, well they've done like this person and that person. Maybe it was somebody famous, but I'm like I don't necessarily need to do anybody famous, plus I don't know anybody famous, not yeah. here in Seattle. But <laughs> like but I was like, I didn't even really fully understand that if I got an influencer that had 5,000 followers or if I had an influencer that had, you know, 500, right? Yeah. And, or 500K. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really understand that. And, and now I do. But in hindsight, I mean, I literally, I, I drafted in my notes. I was like, all right, I'm just going to find all these people that were hashtagging Seattle bloggers. Okay. And they kind of followed each other. And I would yeah. kind of go through their comments and see like who they engaged with the most. And, and, and I was, I was honest with who I was. Like I wasn't yeah. doing it to, I wasn't doing it to like get anything. I was just like, I want to know if this would actually work. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I went through, yeah. yeah. And I, and I went through and I, I created in my notes this little short blur, because for me, if I get something three paragraphs long, I'm going to be like, 
not gonna happen. Okay, I'll read that not later, right? Exactly. So, yeah. So I was like, what's my intent? All right. Yeah. I'm an I'm a new woman small business owner. I'm yeah. in the Bellevue area. I offer a very new upcoming service. I mean, microblading's microblading's a new Botox, let's be honest. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not going anywhere and everyone is doing it of exactly. all ages. Yeah. And and so I I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna send this out and just a straightforward, are you willing to chat with me about this service that I offer? Give me, and, give me, give me a, give me an actual numbers though. I think I want people to get perspective too. If like, they might think, okay, I'm going to send it out to five people and then four are going to say yes. And then yeah. I'm going to blow up and get business. So give me an actual, like, let's yeah. break it down. Like how many people did you reach out to? And what was the, you know? So I reached out to, I didn't reach out to very many, but um, okay. I was, in, I was, I, I reached out to, I would say max 25. Okay. Um, and and immediately I got about 10 responses. So I yes. got about, you know, 10 out of 10 out of 25. And all of them were like, yeah, I'm totally, I'm, I'm down to do this. And, but the first question they go is like, what do you want in exchange? And I'm like, yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't know. And so yeah. there was this one, this, this one uh, blogger who, who uh, I won't say her name, but she's gotten really big over the past few years. And she uh, Huh? Is she a hooper? No, not that one. Okay. Not that one. No. Okay. Uh, but yeah, because I didn't ask her. I don't want to. I don't want to say her name. But um, <laughs> but, but she had nobody. She had no yeah. followers, and yeah. now she did. And uh, and she was like, well, you know, if you if you the way that you should do this is um, you need to write out what exactly you want from them in specifics in yes. trade. Yeah. So that they'll honor what you're asking and then you guys kind of have this verbal agreement so that yeah. they know what you expect and everyone i worked with was great about it i mean yeah. they like everybody so mine was really simple i knew that i didn't want this like just one time shot you know like okay you're posting about me and then it's done yeah i was like i would like three main posts and i want them spaced out um at minimum two weeks apart just so gotcha. that there's like this slow trickle Impression. of like yeah. spring what I think is super important is the fact that you were very directive as far as what you expected out of them. And mm -hmm. I think the people that use influence, that's a lot of happens. And I'm talking about big companies, right? They'll just be yeah. like, okay. And, and a part of the reason I feel like that happens is they're late in the game. They're like, yep. oh shit. Okay. Social media is here. I yeah. need to get influencers. So that's what's trendy. So I'm going to get someone. Yeah. And then they think because they aren't directive or don't, or aren't intentional about what they want them to do when who they have aligning with their brand, they don't get the results. And it's like, yeah. it's not that it can't get the results. You just don't know what you're doing. I've been yeah. to, and I'm not going to say this. I've been to events where they had, okay, just random. Exactly what I just explained. I want influencers to come. And I don't even yeah. consider myself an influencer. I know I have influence, but whatever. I got yeah. there. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't tell us what they wanted us to do. They just put stuff out in front of us and expect us to do whatever we wanted. And if you get yeah. a group of creatives in a room and you let them do free for all, like you yeah. will not get the results that you want. Whole mess. No, so you have to A, know that it, that the brand, regardless of the numbers, align with what you are selling. Right. Yeah. I always say is like if you're selling a high end service, don't use a budget influencer and vice yeah. versa. Not that it, everything yeah. is good for whatever, but also yeah. tell them what you want. Because if you don't tell them what you want, if you leave it to the own devices, you, you aren't going to be happy with the results, most likely. Exactly. And, and finding that person that, that is going to push clients to you, because this is, this is something completely different. You know, I'm in a service. It's not like, and, and yeah. so are you, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like does, is that person really going to be able to provide me? Like, where's their following? I didn't even know any of that. So I figured that yeah. out later on. Yeah. But that's why I tracked it. So I yeah, exactly. would track, like, who was I, how many clients were coming from these influencers? And, and what was fascinating was the people that had the largest numbers, uh -huh. I got nobody, nobody from them really. Yeah. Because the target is not Seattle. Their exactly. target is it's everywhere. And so if they're too big or, yeah. or their following is scattered everywhere, you know, this isn't something where like the service isn't available in any city now. I yeah. mean, this is, it's everywhere. So you know, while it needs yes, to be community people, based. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah, you get some people that fly in to come see you for sure. Like I get people from out of town often, yeah. but it's, it, that's not my regular clientele. My regular, regular clientele is Washington state, yeah. you know? So I needed, I needed people, but I didn't know that at the time. So yeah. I did go through a lot of trial and error. Okay. And I don't think that, 
I don't know if like my rhyme or reason was the right way aside from the fact that that one that one influencer helped me kind of hone in on 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 my expectations so that yeah. was good um you talk about that talk about the expectations too because again i want to touch on that um what did she tell you or he tell you i don't know i know the seattle gents are up there um yeah. what did she tell you or he tell you that like what should you expect how many posts before you actually start getting a client um uh, and there's so many different variables of value too right like yeah someone might not come in immediately and also i want to add like there's different levels of influence yes. like it's not just numbers and engagement it's like okay brandon I actually brandon says something i'm going to go do it if Jacqueline says something, I'm going to do it. If so-and-so says something, it's like, okay, I yeah. might do it. Maybe yeah. not. You know what I mean? So there's levels of influence. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's levels of influence. Plus, like, I didn't really know who I was yet. Like, that was really okay. early on. You know, I mean, this is this is within my first six months of opening. Oh, so you I were mean, like, so you were, yeah. And you've been in business well, now how long? Uh, four and a half years. So you were really, you were quick in the game to your business, but also quick in the game as far as influencer, micro-influencer marketing in the Northwest, because people are probably yeah. still trying to wrap their heads yeah. around that right now. Yeah, like I grew with that industry, because that Got industry you. is is a lot bigger now, and uh, the influencers that I worked with are, are a lot bigger now. I think that uh, that whole market grew, in addition to my marketing uh, like my, uh, my service of the, our industry as cosmetic tattoo artists has grown. I mean, it's flooded. Yeah. Like, I mean, across the street from my business, there's like five other, five other tattoo artists. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, it's not like you can't find it. It's that how do you create who you are? And, 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 and I mean, I know that's completely off the subject of why I use micro influence. Oh yeah. No, but, but go there. Can I talk about authenticity but, and value prop all the time? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, it's like, who am I in this industry? Like, why? One, one of my mentors said to me really early on, why is somebody going to choose you, Jacqueline? And at first I was kind of like, you know. Yeah, like, what, what do you mean? What, do you, what, do you, was, what does that even mean? Like, because, right? But, but it was this very real, and it's a deep question that uh, we should all ask ourselves. Yeah. Why do people choose us? Why do people like you? What do you give them that they don't get somewhere else? Whether that's yeah. a service, a brand, whatever it is, a restaurant, anything. I, I say it another way. I say it, I feel like, what do you do better than anyone else in the world, right? Which is yeah. a broad, big question, but it's like, okay, like it, it, it gets the same answer. Like, what do I yeah. do? What can I offer that is totally. better than anyone else that is uniquely me in yeah. my perspective and my narrative that I want to do it differently yeah. than anyone else could do it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, so, you know, here I am trying to find who I am in addition to, you know, I left my career, right? Yeah. Like at, at, at that point in my life, I was a single mom of three. I have three daughters yeah. and you know, it all was girls. Like, all dangerous, girls, dangerous. Know, so just a bunch of girls, but you know, it was like, my perspective was not how is this going to work, but it is going to work. And, and what am I going to do to make it happen? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I was, I was, I was, you know, probing any uh, type of marketing that I could potentially use because like, I, I'm free, you know, I don't, I don't cost anything. Right. I'm walking around whoever I talk to, that doesn't cost me any money. Yeah. Whoever I can get to come in and post about me, that doesn't cost me any money, cross promoting, mm -hmm. um, even offering discounts in the very beginning was like something like, you know, like maybe I offered the service for free. Maybe I offered it half off for like other, you know, industry people, things like that, yeah. which I could go on and on about the different tactics that I use. But the micro influencers were, were probably the most powerful initially yeah. because they were able to spread a lot faster and it yeah. gained more uh, traction in, you know, the, the world of Instagram, yeah. um, mostly Instagram because I feel like, you know, again, when you start asking, you know, where, where do people find you? It was either at that time it was from, from an influencer or it was from, uh, from Instagram's pictures. I mean, yeah. that's, that's pretty much that's how everybody finds everything yeah. nowadays. I'm, yeah. I mean, yeah, I know. We talked about this before I came on. It's like, for me, it was interesting. I had said something last week, like, because I was still related <laughs> in fashion, um, I had to be on Instagram to have social credibility. But yeah. my particular clientele in Portland, Oregon, for wardrobe branding, 
was someone that was on LinkedIn or professional that I met at an event because yeah. that was my audience that was paying me what I wanted to charge. But yeah. I still need to have that social currency, if you will. So I had to be there. Um, talking about yeah. that, that's a good segue. Where where are you at now? Like, do you, are, have you have you jumped into like TikTok? Are you doing YouTube? Like, what, <laughs> what what's your thoughts on the landscape of social right now? Gosh. I mean, social media is like, it's, it's, it's overwhelming for me. Like I told you, like, I, uh, you know, I, I don't come on camera. This isn't my, this isn't my thing. You, you, so, it like, seems like you do it all the time. No, I like my camera is like face to, you know, like I'm good face to face. Like I, I, I like yeah. that. Like, this is fine, but I don't, uh, I don't really put myself out there that much. So, you know, through quarantine though, yeah, I was like, Oh, I should, I should do it. I should start doing TikTok videos. Right? And then I'm like, right. No, actually, my kids told me I'm too old to do TikTok now. So, so <laughs> uh, that's, that's funny. No. But um, I had considered YouTube. You know, there's like all these different things that I feel like for me. You know, I created this. I created this great. Uh, like, it, there's like pros and cons to this monster of a business that's been yeah. created, right? Like, yeah. I don't have the. T uh, I choose to not create the time for those things because. Yeah. I'm busy enough, but it's not to say that I couldn't do like videos later. I think that people do enjoy this. I think yeah. people ask for this and uh, yeah. it's just my personality type. Maybe you can convince me into doing this stuff more often. I mean, uh, I, you know, if you're asking me, then I'm gonna say, of course. You know yeah. what people like, so t I used to not like, I people think I'm like just super gregarious and outgoing and I will say, yes, now I am. There was yeah. a time, however, when I didn't like video, I didn't like camera. I think I realized that for me and what I was doing, I always knew I wanted to do more stuff than just wardrobe branding. I was like, so I need to become a personality. And I yeah. just, and people, even though I didn't think so, they thought I was decent on camera. I'm like, well, okay, if you think so, then let me lean into this more. And I realized, and I've said this numerous times, a lot of people aren't comfortable. And I'm yeah. like, well, for me, from a business perspective, I'm like, what is a differentiator with me in the marketplace? I'm yeah. good on camera. Yeah. I, it, it doesn't bother me. I'm going to do it more because yeah. that's going to allow me to stay top of mind. And so it was really yeah. more of a marketing, um, lens and, and like the reason why initiative for me to do it as opposed to me just loving camera now i'm just like well yeah where is the camera at oh, let's go <laughs> totally no i mean it's it's funny because in the very beginning i wouldn't even post a picture of myself because yeah. i'm not like i'm just not that person i i never have been but uh but i had learned that when i was tracking what people were like and and still to this day if i if i post a picture oh. of myself they like that more or a video of myself, even if yeah. it's something, a dumb boomerang, yeah. you know, I mean, people want to see video content. It's a really great marketing tool. Yeah. Uh, I just, I haven't pushed myself off that, that. Well, and they that. connect to you, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. you built a brand, you know, you have a sustainable business. I feel like at the end of the day, like I joke around people, like when I, when I sing in the car and I, I will say I can't sing, like when I karaoke in the car, like I get the most response and I put it on my story. I don't, I will not put it on my feed. But yeah. I get the most DM from that because it's something that they can relate yeah. to. And it's like, okay, that's real. Like, yeah. I am in my car, too, and singing. And, and you know, yeah. so I feel like they just have that connection yeah. point. Totally. I agree. I think that I think that if I did it more, obviously, that would be that would probably be beneficial. Because yeah. I think that, you know, when my clients come in, they already know who I am. I don't know yeah. who they are. Yeah. So so there is something that that's special about that connection that. Like, so you'll do more videos when you open your uh, Arizona location, what you're saying. <laughs> I know, right? Trust me. I mean, I, I mean, there's, if anybody's watching this, we, I've talked about this to so many people. I mean, even just like a week ago, my, my, uh, my uh, girlfriend, well, uh, girlfriend, client, I met her as a client. Now she's yeah. a friend of mine. Uh, she came in for her touch up and uh, she's, she's like all moved to Arizona now. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, you just, you got to start down here. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I see. Yeah. But it's like, it's like a two and a half hour flight. It's super quick to get back. I'm telling you. I know. I'll tell so, you one thing. It's a lot cheaper in Arizona than it is here in the, the Bellevue price world. Right. <laughs> Yo. All right. I'm already yeah, knowing. Yeah. I'm already knowing. So okay, you mentioned it. Talk about COVID. How was your business impacted? Uh, how has it changed yeah. you from like going forward potentially in marketing? Like, have you seen yeah. any differences? Have you seen differences amongst the competition in the industry? Like, how have you? Yeah, how I are mean, you navigating it? Yeah. Uh, well, it was. It, I mean, it was. It was hard. I think it's. I think it's been hard on. I think it's been hard on everybody. Uh, 
you know, we were closed for a little over three months, um, abruptly, you know, yeah. unexpectedly, nobody saw it. And, and I think a lot of people that don't have a small business didn't really fully understand that, you know, we were given this little like, oh, it's two weeks. Oh, it's two more weeks. Oh, yeah. now it's a month. Nobody expected that. And so you're in this constant anxiety. I mean, yeah. for, for myself personally, I think that, uh, that, uh, we were lucky to be in in the situation that we are financially that that we were okay yeah um but i see how kind of people are a little hesitant on on now now not for me i've been good i'm i'm packed like i'm booked out till september now but yeah. like solid but yeah. um well, that's but the thing i, I was like yo I, I i'm super and again everyone has a i will risk it all for a haircut like yeah. i will risk it all <laughs> like let's Actually, be clear like yeah, when I was you, in Arizona, I called my barber. He was the one I talked to. I'm like, bro, as soon as I get back and you open, like that is like he like he was like number one on my priority list. So yeah. oh yeah, I'm yeah, the same I mean, for eyebrows. Yeah, it's the same for eyebrows, but also, uh, you know, to what you were just saying, like my partner is a barber, so we we own two small businesses, so we okay. were we were, yeah. we were we were impacted times two. We don't have yeah. not not one of us works from home, so uh, uh, yeah, both of us have been thriving. And we're lucky, but uh, I think that people are hesitant to get back out. I think that things that people can't do on their own, let's say nails, lashes, um, even root color, stuff like that. I'm, I'm noticing that people are not, people aren't getting booked. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's gonna, it's gonna cause a lot of small businesses to go under, especially if we get shut down again, which is, you know, it's a, it's, it's a possibility. So yeah. uh, quarantine, you know, it was a roller coaster of emotions and applying for multiple grants and contract in or not contracts, uh, uh, loans and, yeah. and not seeing in any of that money coming in was really hard because, um, unless you own a larger corporation or you have multiple employees, you know, you don't get as, as much, but exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but we're thriving. We're yeah. good. We'll be fine. Uh, this industry is, I feel like for myself is kind of unfazed right now. People yeah. are, people are begging to get in. We'll be fine yeah. through all of that. Um, talk about the opportunity real quick, because I want to talk about that too. Cause I, everyone can talk about, you know, the the negative. And I, like I say all yeah. the time, you know, with chaos brings opportunity. And yeah. for me, like pivoting the pivot and I'm doing other things and like, I've been blessed, but talk yeah. about the opportunity, um, especially from a competitive, like a market share space how how you've seen that open up potentially to you and that will actually help you flourish in 2021 and beyond yeah yeah um well you know when when other businesses aren't doing as well or other businesses fail it's going to lower you know like what we were talking about there's going to be more space available yeah. prior bellevue is a really small dense area with not a lot of room for smaller businesses gotcha. um and the and the you know square cost per square footage is pretty high in Bellevue. It's, Absolutely. it's even more, it's higher in Bellevue than it is in Seattle. Yeah. And, uh, and so for Bellevue, you know, if, if this, if this market kind of continues to be on the decline, like it is right now, uh, I have some pretty, I have a pretty big, big, uh, picture in my mind of how I want to expand. And, um, I have a really cool vision. Uh, I haven't, I've always had this vision, but I think that it might be even easier if uh, pricing drops. Well, so it might be a good good opportunity. No, I was actually saying before, you know, when it mm. first started, I didn't know the extent to what, you know, what would happen. Mm. I was like, um, there's opportunity even within creatives and expanding market share that way, right? Because gotcha. you can now, whether it's using influencers or whether it's using creative or doing more video, like the yeah. reality is the cost, to, cost of entry might be less which yeah. allows you to do more. And again, you might yeah. not make necessarily more money now, but the investment will, will triple and multiply later on. So yeah, there definitely yeah. is an opportunity too to grow. And like I said, for me, it's like, how do I gain market share? How do yeah. I, you know, get lean and gain yeah. market share? And, you know, so I'm set up for 20, you know, 20. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like I, I, I feel like I've accomplished pretty much uh, the majority of things that I, I wanted to accomplish as far as like marketing went. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I need to grow my Instagram following because everybody says, Jacqueline, why don't you have like more of a following? But I mean, it's, it's a game. Like, I think that what people job. don't understand is, is it's a job, but also, you know, years, years back, uh, people in our industry would just buy 10K followers. And right now they're sitting on, 
you know, yeah. 10, 15 K. And I mean, I could do that right now if I yeah. wanted to. Right? Can, I, I mean, can buy it tomorrow and but, be like, okay, I'm at 25 K and I get two comments. Yeah. But, but my, but my, my, my numbers don't make that never, it never matters. So I haven't put yeah. any energy really into growing that. I mean, yeah. maybe I should, but uh, you know, like uh, I was on the news, so yeah. I've been the only person featured on the news for microblading. Um, that went all up and down the West coast. That video is still around, you know, uh, that was, that was a huge, uh, boost for me. And that was, gosh, that was like three, three years ago in the fall. So yeah, almost three years ago. Um, you know, squares written me up as a small business entrepreneur, uh, that kind of quit their nine to five. I sent you the micro influencer yes. link that Yelp business featured me on. Uh, I've been in some local magazines. Um, and then all these bloggers write about me, you know, because mm -hmm. it, like, but this is the thing when i first started doing this uh and i told you how i went to the riveter i went to that class yeah. and i was like but you know they do it that way and i need to kind of make my page look like theirs and i need to do this and uh the one thing that i remember was was that you need to be true to yourself exactly. and so at that point i was like well if i'm being true to myself then you know here i am and it, and it worked because it wasn't this persona that i had to play on Instagram, it was just who I was genuinely in person. And, exactly. I, and I really pride myself on those relationships that I build with, with my clients. And that, and that spreads like wildfire. I mean, no. you know, your auntie comes in, your grandma comes in, your sister-in-law, your sister-in-law's cousin, you know, and you build these huge circles and, and you get to know these people and they become like this, like work family to you, you know? I, I, and I love that. So, um, authenticity you know, is everything. Like, like you will see me in person pre COVID, and they're like, you're the same. I'm like, what you see is what you get, like it or not. Yeah, who I am. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, be yeah. this all the time. Any event, I'm going to crack jokes. I'm going to talk. If you get to know me, I'm going to probably talk a little bit of shit to you. But it's like, that's just what, that's just what it is. And, you know, you deal yeah. with it or not. So, yeah. so for being, sure. Being genuine and authentic is like, is, that's really the only way, you know? It's, like, you got, you got to find who you are as a brand. And, yeah. um, you know, and, and people help you along the way, you know? All of those all of those influencers helped me all the people that you know were able to post different articles and stuff like that 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 you know that means a lot because when somebody searches about you they can learn about you and it's pretty easy to find so um yeah i'm i'm excited to get past this whole freaking covid stuff and right. and move forward i think that uh, i feel really i feel really fortunate that my business was established pre covid because yeah. Um, I think that there's this potential that people can really like get into a, a, a bad place financially. And then, it, and then it, you know, when you're in a bad place like that, then, then, you know, you can't really progress. So, yeah, no, yeah, yeah no, yeah. what's well, good. You're killing it. I appreciate you. I know I need to make it up to Bellevue if not, but I, <laughs> I say you just open, come down to Arizona and then I'll be, you know, your, your, your number one male client. Yeah, get my eyebrows yeah. right, but tell everyone know, plug you, how they can find you, where you're at. I know you're in Bellevue. What's going on and yeah. what's next? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, you just Google permanent appeal, everything pops up. Like I yes. like I told you before, you know, I'm on I'm on Instagram, everywhere, Yelp, everywhere. Uh, yeah, Google, all the things. And, um, and you're and you're the only one that has that name. I am. It's the only yes. permanent appeal in the Super world. Clever. I haven't I haven't checked it yet, but okay. uh, but as of as of a couple what at least a year ago, I'm the only one. So there, there you, you can't go. really uh, so you, you monopolize really not that market. It. You got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I appreciate you taking the time to meet with me and chat with me, and talk talk some shit, and yeah. uh, you know, um, I think that that this kind of stuff is important for other people to know that. Uh, you know, if they're feeling like they're, they're, they're held up, there's a lot of different marketing avenues that you can, you can approach to Absolutely. try and build on your business. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think for me, I mean, I love being able to talk and coach and help people out. I think I said like for me, when I started this and before I was doing like, the podcast version, it's like, I want businesses and especially creatives to learn business, understand, you know, not only like from real people that have done it, but also not, not just sugarcoated either, like give you the real, like, yeah. this is what it is. This is what you should expect. But at the same time, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And you can, you know, you can thrive and live in your passion. So I'm all about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you just got to do the legwork. That's, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, it's not going to come to you, especially no. if you're starting a new business and you're trying to build who you are. I mean, it, it takes a lot of work. You got to be willing to put that, put that legwork and that energy into it all. Yeah, no, it, yeah, the hustle, the hustle don't stop. That's for it sure. It doesn't stop. No, don't stop. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
Well, man, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm going to talk you Thank into you. Arizona uh, before this is all <laughs> said and done. And uh, yeah, I will be in touch. So next time I come to Seattle, I'll definitely cool. come check you out. Yes, for sure. Maybe in Arizona. Who knows? Maybe. Probably, Arizona. <laughs> Probably in Arizona. I know. I know, right? Yeah, okay, good sure. to see you. Nice Likewise. chatting with you. Take yes, care. Yes, until next time. Yes. Stay cool. I will. You too. All right. All right. Bye.